Hi, everybody. Mandy Davis here, Director of Trauma-Informed Oregon. Um, and I just want to take a few minutes to babble about a few things regarding thinking about re-engaging folks, opening up services, people coming back to work. Um, so I, you know, within the first couple of weeks or the first week of COVID-19 uh, impacting school closures and closing down of, of businesses and et cetera, I was talking to folks about how to manage that stress and also was asking folks to go ahead and start thinking about the next step because we don't want to be surprised. Um, and I really do think that preparing and predicting and planning is a way to mitigate um, levels of toxic stress in these times of um, crisis. So, so I said, hey, you know, while you're working on the right now, also make sure somebody around your agency is working on the next thing. Like when's kids, when students come back to school, what is that going to look like? When workers come back to work, what is that going to look like? And many people, I knew it was not a fair thing to say because many people just weren't there yet. And that, that's, that's okay because I was planting seeds. Um, but uh, the carry the metaphor, those seeds got planted <laughs> and then people called and said, so what's the plan? What should we do for re-engaging um, from starting back in services? Um, and I sat down to try to do that for folks. I was like, all right, so I said this, people asked for this, now I'll do it. And I struggled and I struggled and I have written multiple drafts of the plan for re-engaging in services and it just kept not working. Uh, and I think there are a couple of things that I finally had to reflect on. Um, first off, like what to do is really specific, right? To who you serve, to what sector you work in. Are we talking about your staff? Are we talking about a youth camp? Are we talking about, you know, folks who aren't coming back in but are engaging in services virtually? So they're like all the little things of what to do felt overwhelming in a way that um, was not specific enough for all those who, who may need to, uh, who may need to do that. So, so that happened. And then I realized that I really was repeating all the work that was already in the considerations for organizations and COVID-19 response work that we did and put up. So, so do look at that because that's still relevant. Just because that was about the right now doesn't mean it's not relevant about how we engage. So look at those, we took those principles of trauma from care and really talked about um, policies and procedures you should be considering as an organization. So look at that. Um, what seemed to be missing as I reflected with others and listened to others was like um, this kind of healing part of the work. So in our consideration page and in the principles of trauma from care, kind of honoring the impact and how that might be showing up as people re-engage in services seemed to be the missing piece. So I'm going to tell you some things I think we need to consider. Um, and when I say consider, I really need this to be important I, that these are things to sit with and reflect with and think about, are they relevant for you to address in, in your organization, with your staff, with your families, and then how? And those, are, those, those questions really need to be thought through and, and feel free to call us because we're not telling you how to do this. These are kind of reflections of things I think we need to probably attend to in some capacity, depending on your work. All right, so um, you know, these are issues because I don't have a better word for them. Um, and if you, if you listen to, so after you hear them, I think you'll start to recognize these are often common pathways, steps, phases that survivors go through, survivors work through, survivors um, uh, embrace as they're healing from a traumatic event or a, a history of trauma. So just you know, know that these are really coming from the lessons of uh, folks who've experienced trauma. Okay, so here we go. So a couple of things I think organizations are gonna to wanna to think about how to attend to. One is being seen and heard. So as we keep saying that everyone is experiencing COVID-19, not everyone is experiencing it in the same way. So, you know, is there, you know, and again, you have, call us or you have to think about the, the details of this, but how can we make sure as staff come back into the workplace that there isn't the, like the idea that everyone was home making bread? And this isn't a like go around everyone tell your story because that may not be safe in your organization and, and the way that you function for some organizations that might be, um, it might be drawing it out. But, but to be able, this is really about raising awareness or are there ways to receive that information and to give back that information that just helps raise the awareness and consciousness of your staff or of your organization to remember that it's, it's not the same for everybody. And think about this, think about the need to be seen and heard and, and to have your unique experience to be seen and heard, right? Um, and how important that is. And again, not for everybody and not all at the same time. A second thing to attend to is the idea of grief and loss. So we obviously have people who have, who have lost individuals and loved ones in their life. We have folks who have lost 
um, you know, celebratory events. They've lost contact with people. They've lost, but we also have people who've lost jobs, um, who've lost security. So, uh, so lots of, lots of, lots of grief and loss. And, and this is important to be able to bring into the space. And again, it could simply be an awareness of, right? A statement of, we understand that people are experiencing grief and loss in lots of different ways. And we just want to honor that. And we know that might show up in the workspace and here are the things we have available or we will, we will be able to, to provide in that time. What I really appreciate about thinking about this through a grief and loss lens also is that grief and loss allows us to have a journey, right? You don't, you don't, you don't begin and end grief. It, it, it shifts and it changes and it evolves. And so I think that really will help folks realize, you know, it's not going to come back and be hard for two days. It might be fine for a while and then it might be activating again, right? The third thing to attend to, to think about attending to, is this idea of abandonment. Um, in the clinical world, we often talk about betrayal trauma. So the idea that those for whom you look to, to protect, to be there for you, weren't there for you. Um, and I, I think, you know, I think we can think about this differently for organizations, maybe feelings of left out or not being seen. So you know, you'll have to play with the language around that as you, as you, as you engage with this. But I do think, like I asked my staff, like in what ways have I, have I not been able to be there for you or how the organization not been able to be there for you? And this again will be different for folks. And, um, and, and the important thing is that it's not necessarily personal. It's not that I intended to, and maybe because of policies, I couldn't provide everyone the monitors they needed or the amount of computers they needed or the internet access that they needed, right? But I think it's important that we have that conversation and, and we feel comfortable allowing that to come to the table. And then finally, having a way to really talk about post-trauma growth, right? what, what we've learned and what we wanna to continue to move forward with. Um, and that kind of comes out of that abandonment place too, right? Like what didn't work well? How did you not feel supported in this process? And learning from that about, you know, when this happens again, how can we do that differently? So what are some learnings we've had about better practice, better service, better engagement in this particular time and making sure we document that and that we encourage that to continue with all the different policies that have changed in, order, in, in the time of COVID-19, um, you know, while also recognizing you know, the innovation, the imagination we, we, wanna, we wanna be able to put into this um, as we move forward. So four things to think about, being how to, how to allow people's unique experiences to be made aware of, um, grief and loss, so this is a process and feelings will change over time, um, the potential of having felt like you were left out or not cared for by the organization during this time, and then the post-trauma growth. And then really thinking about, you know, especially for certain folks like school folks and et cetera, that, that when this happens again, when stay home and stay safe might need to happen again, you know, let's, let's do the work now so that that isn't an activating event, um, but that we're, we're more prepared, right? And we're able to protect and do it, do it better. So again, we hope to put out some things around this, but this is an intimate conversation with your organization and with your staff and to think about. I'm gonna pause there. So just to sum up, these are uh, you know, these uh, these four things are things I really think we're going to need to find a way to attend to. But how we do that is going to be really important. Um, so reach out uh, as if, if this feels like it's um, something important. And I think another way to maybe think about this is what happens if we don't attend to these things, if we don't attend to the unique experiences people had or the grief and loss people have experienced or the feeling left out or not cared for, um, you know, those things unresolved, those things will find a way to, to play themselves out in the day, in the work. Um, so I think that's why we want to think about how to, how, how to at least at the minimum bring some awareness to that. All right. Thank you.